Top money lies people tell themselves. Money matters can be stressful and fraught with emotion. How much we earn, spend, save, and owe can get tied up with our feelings of self-worth and relationships with others. We surveyed 2,600 U.S. residents to find out how they feel about their finances and how honest they are with others when it comes to money. Participants told us they are more comfortable talking with others about their age, weight, and mental health than their credit card debt or income. And people would rather talk about their sex lives than how well they're saving and investing for the future. Watch for a closer look at who is most likely to tell each lie and possible reasons why. Line number one, downplaying how much something cost. Maybe you bought something you wanted but didn't technically need. You don't want to be judged for spending money instead of saving, or for making an impulsive, emotional buying decision instead of exercising restraint. So you tell a little white lie, it was on sale or it wasn't very expensive. Line number two, hiding a purchase from a partner or family member. Rather than face criticism for buying another pair of shoes, an upgraded gadget, or a cute outfit for the baby, you hide your purchase in the car trunk until the coast is clear. Then you remove the tags and list the new item into your home, taking care to dispose of the packaging. With any luck, your partner or family won't notice and make you feel guilty. Line number 3, misrepresenting or concealing income on a health insurance application. You're going through the annual ritual of applying for health insurance and you reach the part where it asks, how much do you expect to make this year? How much are your family members going to earn? Ever since, answering these questions has been a crucial step in applying for health insurance under the Affordable Care Act. Currently, if your income is less than $51,400 for an individual, $68,960 for a couple, or $104,800 for a family of four, you can get assistance paying your premiums. The lower your income is, the bigger the subsidy you receive from the government. A few thousand dollars of income could make a big difference in the amount you pay each month. Line number four, hiding a bank account or credit card from a partner. You never know what will happen in life, so it makes sense to have access to your own funds outside of any joint accounts. Maybe you'd established an account long before you met your partner and merged finances, and it seems simpler to keep quiet. Line number five, misrepresenting or concealing income on a financial aid application. You've worked hard to keep your finances strong. You know there are serious consequences for lying on your application, but without financial aid, you can't access the resources you need to climb to that next level. So you fudge your numbers, conveniently forgetting about last year's side hustle or the money your folks gave you. Line number six, exaggerating how much something costs to friends, family, or a partner. Your friends always have great shoes and hot new tech. And your sister always seems to be driving a different new car each time you see her. You want to show you're at their level, even if you're not quite there yet. You know fake it till you make it is real, your Instagram shows you're getting there. So when someone compliments your jewelry or new phone, you tell them it costs more than it actually did. Line number 7, lying in a job interview when asked about previous salary. It's a wickedly uncomfortable question with potentially costly consequences, how much did you make at your last job? Depending on your field, it may be unlikely that the interviewer could verify. Line number 8, lying to a partner about how much debt you have. Maybe you're coming into the relationship carrying debt from college, an old medical emergency, or that period when you had to live off your credit cards. You don't want to burden your partner or scare them off, nor do you want to lecture about protecting your credit score. So when the subject of debt comes up, you play it down, naming a number less than the amount you really owe. Line number 9, lying on a tax return. Last year you cut your spending drastically and picked up a lucrative side hustle that helped you pay off some debt, with even enough left over to support your favorite charity. That extra income disqualifies you from the tax credits you usually get. Luckily, a lot of that extra pay was in cash, so you can forget about that, and maybe designate some of your expenses as business related. The IRS will never know the difference. Will they? Line number 10, concealing a windfall from a partner, surprise check, gift, refund, winnings. They'll likely just criticize your gambling or gullible lending habits again, and you don't want them to bring you down right now. So instead of telling them about the money, you keep it to yourself. No matter your background, 
money is one of the most difficult issues to talk about, especially between partners and among family members.